Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the first weekly market review for the month of May. As usual, I have with me Mr. Gerald Wong today. How are you, Gerald? Hey, I'm good. Um, so last week we were saying that very quickly we are through four months of the year, and now we are into the first week of May. Uh, quite a number of developments in the market last week. So hope to be able to share our insights with the audience today. Yes, we do have a very positive equity market or global market last week because firstly, uh, Fed Chair said that he felt that the rates right now are restrictive enough. So that is the fears of investors uh, fearing that there might be a rate hike this year. And on Friday, we have that weaker than expected non-farm payroll data, which more or less reaffirmed that we are likely going to see the rate cut happening towards the end of the year. So do you have more of the details to share with us today? Okay, uh, as usual, today's sharing is for information purposes only and should not be taken to be financial advice. Uh, if you are interested to get more answers from Sunny and myself, uh, do join the upcoming ASEAS that is on 15th of May and you can register through the link that is provided here. Uh, it will be helpful if you can leave us a review on Google as well, either by going to this URL or by scanning the QR code. Uh, lastly, if you are keen to join CS as a member, it costs only $12 per year or $1 per month. And once again, you can scan this QR code or go to the CS website at cias.org.sg slash membership. Okay, so what did we see in the markets last week? Um, as Sunny mentioned earlier, uh, we had a bit of a risk on uh, with the S&P 500 up by 0.5%. Uh, now back to above the 5,100 level. Okay, uh, the gains were led by tech stocks. As we can see here, uh, the NASDAQ gained by 1.4%. Uh, and we also saw that Apple reported stronger than expected results, share buyback, and as a result, um, that lifted the US tech stocks. Uh, closer to home, we have the SDI seeing gains of 0.4%. A big part of it was driven by DBS, which we will go through in more detail later. Okay, so starting with the macro developments, what we saw last week was the Fed meeting. Uh, so on 1st of May, the Fed had its meeting and what happened was that they left interest rates unchanged. So this is reflected in the Fed fund rate that you see here, uh, which has effectively been kept at the same level. But as what Sani mentioned earlier, the key takeaway is really uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's comment that the next action by the Fed is unlikely to be a rate hike and that effectively led investors to keep their hopes alive that we might still see interest rate cuts this year. Okay, uh, the other key data point that came out last week was the US non-form payroll data and as we can see here, um, the job data in the US was lower than expected. Okay, so uh, one of the lower job gains over the past few months. So that once again reinforced investor hopes that we might still see rate cuts coming through this year. Okay, so this is the usual CME FedWatch 2 that we come back to on a weekly basis. And effectively, what we see here is that at this point in time, uh, we are still expecting the first rate cut to come through in September this year. Uh, now with close to a 50% probability. Uh, but more importantly, what we see here is that there's a slight shift in that investors are expecting that there will be potentially a further rate cut in December. Um, as opposed to previously when investors were expecting that there might just be one rate cut this year. Okay, so because of the Fed meeting, because of the lower than expected jobs data, uh, there has been some shift in terms of the expectations around rate cuts. This is reflected in the US government bond yields as well. Okay, so if you look at the US 10-year government bond yield, a uh, slight decline to 4.5% now uh, from 4.7%, uh, maybe about one to two weeks ago. Okay, so if you were to look at the Singapore market, um, in terms of the top performers, we have got a number of the Jardine related names. Uh, Hong Kong Land led the gainers uh, because of improved sentiment towards the Hong Kong and Chinese market. 
Uh, then we also have DBS, which reported their earnings last week, also being one of the top gainers. Okay, in terms of the top losers, uh, we have a number of the Maple Tree related REITs, uh, Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, um, and then we also have got Wilma that was down by 6.9%. Okay, so I'm sure what many of you are interested about would be DBS, uh, which reached a record high share price and also became the first Singapore listed stock to exceed the 100 uh, million, 100 million kind of market cap. Uh, so this is what we see here in terms of the um, share price in that it reached close to um, the $35.50 mark. Uh, and having a very strong gain so far year to date. Okay, so if you're to look at the results reported by DBS, uh, the total income as well as the net profit uh, was a record high. Uh, if you're to look at the net profit, uh, close to 3 billion just in the first quarter alone. And that was a 15% increase compared to the previous year. Okay, so firstly, what is interesting to me from the results was the improvement in the net interest margin. Uh, if you were to look at the group level, the net interest margin went up to 2.14% uh, from 2.13% in the previous quarter. Okay, so that is a positive sign because it effectively rebounded after declining slightly from the previous quarter. And with this, we also saw a very strong increase in the net interest income of DBS compared to the previous year. The other thing that was very strong is the fee income. Okay, if you look at the first quarter fee income, uh, close to 1.3 billion. Again, a sharp increase compared to the previous year. And if you were to look at which are the areas with strength in the fee income, uh, the wealth management side was very strong, uh, increasing to about 536 million from 365 million in the previous year. Okay. Uh, other segments such as cards, uh, loan related also saw growth. Um, so that is seen by investors to be a positive sign. Okay, the other positive from DBS results is this decrease in the cost income ratio. So what this effectively represents is what is the cost level as a percentage of the total income. So what we see here is that it has fallen to 37% from 44% in the previous quarter. So what this means is that while we see this increase in the net interest income, uh, while we see increase in the fee income, it's been able to keep its cost under control. So that helps to boost its net profit as a result of the increase in these two segments. Okay, uh, we also saw a uh, more positive guidance given by DBS. Okay, so if you were to look at what is the guidance here, uh, the net interest income is expected to be modestly better than 2023 levels, um, cost income ratio to be the low 40% range, and more importantly, the net profit is now expected to be above the 2023 levels, okay? So effectively, what this means is that DBS is now expecting the net profit this year to be above what it was able to achieve in 2023. Okay, uh, with that, DBS also raised the interim dividend uh, to 54 cents per share in the first quarter uh, versus 38 cents per share in the first quarter of 2023. Okay, uh, recall that DBS recently just had the bonus issue. Okay, so these numbers would effectively reflect the bonus issue in that this 54 cents per share would be on the larger share base. Okay, so it will also be applicable for the one additional share that you would have received for the 10 existing shares help of DBS. Okay, so at this point in time, if I were to look at the 54 cents per share and analyze it, uh, what this means is that DBS is effectively offering a dividend yield of 6.1%. And even though the share price has gone up significantly, it is still above the dividend yield that is offered by UOB as well as OCBC, okay? 
So this might be seen as a positive sign uh, by shareholders, which has explained why DBS share price has performed so well this year. Okay, next we'll cover a read uh, Maple Tree Logistics Trust. Um, as opposed to DBS, we saw that the share price of Maple Tree Logistics Trust has been fairly weak this year, uh, falling from above 170 per share uh, to now 135 per share. Okay, so first and foremost, we look at the uh, latest earnings reported by Maple Tree Logistics Trust. Um, the REIT has a year end in March, okay? So when we are looking at the fourth quarter numbers, uh, this would effectively reflect the distributions through the quarter ending March, okay? So if we were to look at the fourth quarter distribution per unit, 11 cents, okay? Uh, so if you were to look at the gross revenue, uh, it increased slightly. Um, and then the net property income was also a slight increase. Uh, but what we see here, as with quite a number of other reads, is that the borrowing costs increased by 7% compared to the previous year. Uh, and with that, we actually see that the amount distributable to unit holders was just up by 1.1%. Okay, Because of the larger uh, unit base, uh, that explained the fall in the available distribution per unit uh, by 2.5% compared to the previous year. Okay, next, if you to look at the portfolio occupancy of Maple Tree Logistics Trust, at a portfolio level, it remained fairly steady, okay? So 96% portfolio occupancy, uh, which is quite stable compared to where it was in December last year of 95.9%. Okay, if you look at where the bulk of its assets are, which is in Singapore, uh, this is where we saw resilience in terms of the occupancy where it was at 96.6%, uh, quite similar to the levels in December last year. Okay, uh, the other thing that we always keep a close lookout for would be the balance sheet. And what we see here is that the uh, gearing level of Maple Tree Logistics Trust, 38.9% as of March 2024. Okay, so still below the 40% level, but a slight increase compared to where it was on 31st March 2023. Okay, uh, the more positive news is that if we were to look at the weighted average annualized interest rate, uh, it's been able to keep it fairly stable at about 2.7%. Um, so that might be seen as something where it has been able to keep its debt cost fairly low, um, even though we have seen a fairly high um a fairly sharp increase in interest rates over the past few quarters. If you have to look at the upcoming earnings uh, that is coming up, uh, we have the Lenny Street earnings that is coming up this week, Phrases Logistics and Commercial Trust. Uh, we also have a number of the big uh, blue chip names that are reporting this week, uh, including UOB on the 8th of May, as well as OCBC on the 10th of May. If you are interested in the T-bills, there's an upcoming six-month T-bill auction on this Thursday as well. Uh, so again, another busy week for investors. Um, and with that, I'll hand over to Sunny, who will share with us more about the technical analysis. Hey, thanks, Gerald, for that uh, detailed coverage of what happened in the market last week. Let's go to the uh, charts right now. First, we will start with the STI chart. So uh, just a recap of what we went through with the STI. Uh, in the middle of April, we said that uh, when the STI pulled back to below the uh, 3,000 level, that would be something that we need to take note of. It dropped below the Bollinger Band, and that is the support level that we look at in getting in. And then after that, market sort of have a very big rebound. So last two weeks, uh, we're actually on the second uh, consecutive winning week already on the STI. Uh, last week, we saw uh, Gerald mentioned that we are up 0.4%, and the week before, we are up more than 3%. So this is the big, around close to a 4% gain that we saw uh, for the past two weeks. So we reached a high of about 3,300, 
400 on 24th April. And last week, uh, 2nd of May on Thursday, we reached another high on 3,324 points. So I believe uh, you can just based on the numbers itself, uh, 3% on the previous week. And last week, we saw the 0.4%. The upside is uh, starting to slow down in momentum. Okay. And as you can see also on the MACD indicator, the past three trading sessions at least, the momentum has been slowing down as well. On the RSI indicator, you can see that the latest reading is 65, still very healthy and strong kind of a momentum reading. But we are very close to the 70 point uh, overbought mark also. Though that is something that we need to take note of because once it crossed above the 70 point mark, like what we saw towards the end of December last year, uh, market will start to have a bit of a pullback again. But when that pullback happens, it doesn't mean that market is coming down straight, uh, uh, straight away. We are likely going to see some uh, subsiding in the momentum of the uptrend that we have been observing since the low of October last year. So where is the where are the support and resistance level that we are looking at right now on the STI index? So we identified the uh, the three thousand level as a key support level. We touched three thousand three, which is the resistance level. Actually, we did we have a resistance level before that around the three two five zero level because we are uh, referencing the uh, March high at three two three two six one. Okay, so now that the index have breached all these uh, previous uh, year to date high, uh. As you can see, on a very strong trending market, the prices or the index points usually trend on the upper bound of that Bollinger Band. And that is a, a when we breach the Bollinger Band, we will normally advise or traders would usually take profit once it breached the upper and lower bound of the uh, Bollinger Band. So what we need to do now is we identify a support uh, last Monday around this level below the 20 days moving average and the 50 days uh, moving average. So now that market has trended higher, the, the moving average, as you can see, the 20 days moving average has also moved up higher already in tandem with the 50 days moving average average in blue so we will need to adjust this again this level so let me turn off this magnet and then okay so now the support level that we are looking at is between below the 20 days moving average and above the 50 days moving average and that is around the uh, 3237 uh, level or I will just take the average uh, between the 20 days and the 50 days moving average at around a 3200 level that would be the uh, support that I'm looking at to get back on the SCI index to write on, on the upward trend that we are observing right now okay so that's my take on the STI index this week I will move on to the US indices so as uh, we mentioned earlier Earlier, we have that weaker than expected uh, non-farm payroll data, which uh, sort of uh, reinforced what the Fed has said that uh, we are likely going to see a rate hike this year. And market has already priced in a second uh, rate uh, cut in December. So we are expecting the first rate cut to come in in September, followed by the second one in December. That's what the market, the Fed fund pricing is uh, pricing in right now. Okay, so we have that a uh, very good uh, Friday last week last week and we see that the Dow Jones index bounced up 1.18 percent we are now at 38,675 points so where do we go from here so we have bounced up above the 20 days moving average which has been the resistance level that market has been observing since the the end of April so we have broke above that level and that means that we are on track to retest the upper bound of the Bollinger Band on the Dow Jones index right now which is now around the 38,900 level or I would just say the I would just put the handle at 39,000, that will be the resistance to watch. If you are looking at how far the Dow Jones index rebound will go, looking at the momentum reading, we do have the MACD indicator in a positive territory right now. That means that there's actually positive momentum in the index movement right now. We also see that the um, the MAC line is starting to diverge away from the signal line upwards. And that means that uh, market is gaining momentum towards the upside right now. And once that divergence uh, extends further and we breach above the zero baseline in the MACD indicator, then most likely we will retest the year-to-date high at around the 39,890 points level. So I think the 40 points level will still be a target that we want to touch uh, towards the end of the year for the Dow Jones Index. Looking at the RSI, we also have a slight positive momentum, four points above the 50-point uh, neutral mark. So both of the uh, indicators, MACD and RSI, are confirming each other that we are likely going to see this uh, positive momentum continue, at least for this week, and then before we give you an update again next week. So on the Dow Jones Index, we expect it to breach, uh, breach or touch the uh, upper bound of the Bollinger Band somewhere around the uh, 38,934 points. 
Next, let's move to the S&P 500. We have that similar movement in the candlesticks. We have a bounce above the 20 days moving average. So that is a, also a short-term sign. If you are reading the moving average, that means that uh, we are above the short-term average and we, are, we could likely be on an uptrend. The MACD indicator has also turned positive last Friday. So we expect that to continue this week because there's a positive momentum reading right now. But the... Uh, the crossover of the MACD and the signal line is still pretty close. So we might need a, a one or two sessions to see how much the diversion is upwards to gauge the momentum of the rebound that we are seeing right now. But nonetheless, I think we will still have a great chance of retesting the year-to-date high at 5263. 5,200 points will be the one that the level that we are all looking out for. RSI is at uh, 53, three points above the 50-point neutral mark, also above the 42 points, uh, 14 days average RSI reading. So that means that we are also on a upside trend, upside momentum reading, positive reading right now that we are going to see uh, going into this week. So S&P 500 uh, could retest the upper bound of the Bollinger Band, which is now reading at the uh, 5,219 points. So I'll just round it off. 5,200 is the target that we are looking at for the next few weeks for the S&P 500. Lastly, let's move to the uh, NASDAQ Composite Index, which is the tech-rich index. So after the non-farm payroll data uh, was announced, uh, which came in much weaker, so market actually priced in a second uh, rate cut uh, this year in December. And that is uh, actually very positive for rate-sensitive uh, mega-tech stocks. Okay, that Hence, the uh, NASDAQ Composite Index was actually the best performer last week. So going into this week, we also see that uh, Walt Disney is going to uh, announce its earnings on Tuesday as well. So that could be another catalyst to push up the NASDAQ Composite Index. So NASDAQ Composite Index is, uh, I would say, the, the leader in performance uh, for the last week among the three years indices. We already have two positive readings in the last two trading sessions on the MACD indicator. And hence, uh, the, the momentum reading uh, in the NASDAQ Composite Index is much higher compared to the other two US indices. And you can look at the divergence of the... Um, MAC line above the signal line is actually much more prominent than the other two indices. So the strength of the upward movement in the NASDAQ Composite Index is likely going to be larger and hence the testing of the upper bound of the Bollinger Band at about uh, 16,464 points would be a, a very um, high possibility kind of occurring for this week and next week. On the RSI, we have a 55-point reading, the best RS, uh, RSI reading among the three US indices, meaning that the momentum in the NASDAQ Composite Index is much higher than the other two index, and hence the uh, NASDAQ Composite Index would likely lead the gains in the next few weeks to retest the high again. And the year-to-date high that we see on the NASDAQ Composite Index is somewhere on 21st March. Okay, let me do that. On 21st March, over here, Okay, and that is around the level of 16,538 points. Okay, so do take note uh, of all these key levels to watch out for, the especially the resistance level. And these are the levels that uh, we could retest uh, going towards uh, the end of May uh, for this month period. Okay, so that's my take on the US indices uh, for this week. Anything else to add, Gerald? So I guess quite a number of things to keep a lookout for. Uh, for myself, the UOB and OCBC results are definitely key to watch, especially after what DBS reported last week. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some of these updates for you in next week's uh, market uh, review. Okay, and I think that is the time that we have for this week's weekly market review. Thank you everyone for tuning in as always. So as in the meantime, do remember to stay safe and trade safe and we'll catch up with you again next week in the next weekly market review. Goodbye. Thank you.